Hello fellow plot coasters, today we got the Purple Hibiscus, a novel by Chimamanda Adichie. And well, let's get right on to it. So, first of all, I'll talk about plot, then I'll talk about the themes, then I'll talk about my take and analysis upon Kambili's character. So let's get right into it. So there are four central characters, Kambili, Papa, Mama, and I guess there's five because there's Auntie Fiomo. And I'll explain their roles in a second. So this is, takes place in Nigeria, and it's a it's an it's a time of political unrest. Everyone is kind of afraid. There's a new government coming in, and democracy is dead. And because of that, the economy is also crashing. However, Kambili is from a very rich family, so she should be happy, or that's what we sh what we think. But in fact, she's miserable because her father is abusive, and because that's all she ever knew, she really isn't aware that he is abusive. He micromanages her life, he controls her every daily schedule down to the very second of cleaning her clothes and studying. And he doesn't even let her see his her the goddamn grandfather just for the reason that the, he has a different religion than them. By the way, their religion is Christianity figures. And under this really oppressive environment, both Kambili and Jaja, Jaja is Kambili's older brother, is not exactly flourishing. They've become working machines, and all they do is go to school, come back home, study more, go to school, study more, etc., etc. But one day, Auntie Ifuma breaks that chant. Who's Auntie Ifuma? So Auntie Ifuma is Papa's sister, and she is an extremely nice person. She's very open, and she's a professor at the university, so he's, she's very, very smart, and in some sense, she's a lot less rigorous than Papa. And she makes this suggestion, hey, why don't I take both Kambili and Jaja to my house and have them stay over for a little bit? And Papa goes, okay, sure. I mean, he doesn't actually say, okay, sure, he has a little bit of disagreement, but Auntie Fiona manages to, to just grab them and take them. And there, for the first time, Kambili and Jaja experience freedom. They aren't trapped anymore. They don't have to follow a micromanaged minute-by-minute -minute schedule anymore. They're free to do whatever they want. There, Kambili discovers that life isn't just about studying and being oppressed and repressing her own emotions. In fact, life is about exploration, learning, and having fun. And there, she feels a little bit of hope. However, she has to go back to Papa, and, and there's a lot of subplot, 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 subplot. And after that, Jaja actually kind of openly awakes himself as like a grown-up and he kind of starts openly reveling in his papa, saying that he won't believe in Christianity anymore and just not following his directions. At first, papa is very, very angry and throws some throws things at Jaja, but eventually he kind of just seems to resign himself. While Kambili is still trying her best to get papa's approval and attention because she's a little kid, that's what little kids do. I mean, she's a teenager, but still. However, Papa's abuse gets worse and worse, mostly probably because of how stressed he is because of the governmental situations. And here I should mention that Papa is a very important person. He has a lot of money, he's a businessman, and, he's, and because of that, his family is very well off, and also because of that, his political opinions and his support of the free press is very highly monitored by the new government. And probably because of that, he's quite stressed. And maybe because of that, he's a lot more abusive even than usual. One day, Kambili and the entire family actually goes to church. And on their way to church, Papa forces Mama to do multiple things, even though she's pregnant with the third child. And after, after several arguments, Papa beats Mama. And because of that, she loses her third child. This finally makes Mama go absolutely insane. The final little bit of her sanity is gone. And after that, she slowly poisons Papa while Jaja and Kambili are away to add Auntie Fumas once again. And Papa dies. And Kambili is forced to grow up and become an adult. Jaja takes the blame and goes to jail for Mama. And the book ends with Kambili thinking about freedom and being a grown up woman or being forced to be a grown up woman now. However, she's a lot more open to. Uh, to Nigerian culture and is less oppressed. Obviously, this is rather very, very compressed summary, but this is how it mostly goes. Now, I'll talk about the themes and I'll talk about my take and analysis upon Kambili's character. 
First off, the themes. So the themes, I think, are freedom, change, and growing up. So this is obviously a building's roman. It is a growing up, coming to age story. And I think Kambili being oppressed at the start or like suppressing herself and then slowly learning the meaning of life, there's definitely strong themes of freedom and change. There's also the theme of religion because of how prevalent it is as an oppressing source within the book. And I think a lot of these things kind of combine and meld with each other in very interesting ways. Now by analysis. So I think that every character in the book is a reflection of Kambili and is affecting Kambili to make her the whole adult person that she's kind of forced to become at the end of the book. Papa represents her fear and her terror and her oppression. Mama represents her like subservient part and her desperate craving for affection from her father. Monty Fiuma represents the start point of freedom and Jaja represents her rebellion. There are a couple other characters that I didn't mention within the summary that are important, such as Auntie Ifuma's daughter, who also affects Kambili and kind of shows and kind of works as a fold of how what Kambili could have been. But honestly, I'm not gonna go into that because you should probably read the book for that. And so to summarize, Purple Hibiscus is a book about growing up, and it's about this girl Kambili going from a quiet, subservient girl abused by her father, to a young woman. Obviously, the process in itself can be considered tragic because she was forced to grow up so quickly because of her external circumstances. However, you can also say that Kambili has grown up to be a beautiful person because of the people around her and the effect of every single person that appears within the book. I don't particularly love the book because, first of all, I don't love historical fiction as a genre, and it is a very... It, it deals with very harsh topics, which, which is in, in almost like a dystopian sense, if you understand what I mean. Because books like 1984 and other dystopian books are very, like, very important. They're worth a lot, but they're still not pleasant to read because they reflect the harsh truth of society and the world currently. And it's a rather pessimistic harsh view as well. And in that sense, I feel like Purple Viscus is a very valuable book and lesson that one should definitely aim to finish and read. But as a in, as a, having entertainment value, I um it, it was terrifying. Like Papa's abusive environment and and all of that stressfulness for the main character and the protagonist. It was it was very stressful to read. But again, I guess that is also a testament to Chimamanda Adichie's extremely good writing. Another thing that I want to comment upon her writing is actually how she begins the book. She begins her book with an event that happens chronologically within the middle of the plot. Then she goes back to the start before the event had happened. And I think this is a very interesting device because we can see that we can know what's going to happen. And then we kind of go back to the past and we kind of, it's like waiting for, it's like watching a ticking bomb explode, right? Like we know it's going to explode. That's what happens at the start of the book. It's the scene where Jaja first rebels against Papa, and we just wait for the entire book for that to happen. And that's, again, it's stressful, but it also is very compelling, and it allows the reader to move on. And I think it creates stakes, and it just intrigues the reader, which I think is a very interesting device. Overall, I'd give this book a 7 out of 10, because it doesn't have, obviously it doesn't have like the amazing entertainment value, but it is a very extremely valuable form of literature. It is written extremely well, and everything within the book within the book is very deliberate. What I touched up on is a mere surface level scrape of the analysis that you can do with this book. And if you're in the IB MIP program, you're gonna have to deal with this for like four months, so good luck, <laughs> like I did. And like always, your podcaster, Aaron the Podcaster, it is an interesting book. I would recommend it, but I would warn you, it is quite a heavy read. Have a great day, everyone. Goodbye.